We want to determine the equation for the graph in blue based upon what we know about the graph of y equals x squared, graphed here in red. So we'll let y equal f of x, so we'll call this f of x equals x squared, and then we'll call a transformed function g of x. Because g of x is a transformation of f of x, we can write g of x in this form here, where the values of a, b, c, and d transform the graph of f of x. So the first step is to determine the transformation that has occurred to form the blue graph. It may be a little challenging to see, but if we look at the red graph and the blue graph, the blue graph is wider than the red graph, which means the red graph has either been vertically compressed or horizontally stretched to form the blue graph. It doesn't matter which of these transformations we use, but let's go ahead and select a vertical compression. But we do have to remember that if we select a vertical compression, it is going to affect the value of A. And let's go ahead and write that down. We have a vertical compression, which means A should be less than one. Also notice how the vertex of this graph here is at the origin, but on this graph it's at the point three zero, which means this graph has been shifted right three units. Knowing we have a shift right of three units, gives us enough information to determine the value of C. These are the only two transformations that we have, which means we can write G of X in terms of F of X as G of X equals A times F of the quantity X plus C. Now that we know this, we'll find the value of C from our graph and then pick a point on the graph, perform substitution, and then solve for A. The value of C determines whether we have a shift left or right. If C is positive, the graph is shifted left, and if C is negative, the graph is shifted right. So the sign of C is actually the opposite sign that we might think. Because our graph is shifted right three units, or in the positive direction along the x-axis, C is actually negative three. Which means G of X is equal to A times F of the quantity X minus three. And because f of x is equal to x squared, we can write this as g of x equals a times the quantity x minus three squared. Now we'll select a point on the blue function and then solve for a, but we can't select the vertex. So let's go ahead and select this point here where the x coordinate is five and the y coordinate is two. If the function contains the point five, two, then g of five must equal two. So g of five, must equal a times, again, if x is five, we'd have five minus three, that's two. So we'd have two squared equals positive two. Two squared is four, so that means four a equals two. Divide both sides by four. We have a equals one half. Now we have all the information we need. If a is equal to one half, we'll just substitute one half here for a, and we have our equation for g of x g of x is equal to one half times the quantity x minus three squared. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.